Today we are having a detailed look at the new Spark 3D update, at how we can max out the potential to generate the best 3D AR models and textures possible. In addition to that, I will also show you a way how you can use the new Flux Context model to get even crisper and more defined 3D AR models than ever before. Having said that, let's dive right into it. So today I wanted to just give you a brief update about what changed on Spark 3D since they released also now their texturing mode, which I think is really cool. And as well, I wanted to show you a few methods how we can improve kind of the texturing itself, but also the model generation from our 3D AR models, because to be honest, Spark 3D is one of the best options out there at the moment. So having said that, let's directly dive into it. So as you can see, um, we are getting started today on the Hyten 3D website. And this is where we run the official Spark 3D model. We also have a hugging face page, but here we have way more options when it comes to this. And also here we can use the new texturing mode. When you want to get started, some of you already know it from the previous video I did about Spark 3D. You first have to, of course, upload an image. I chose here this one, which I also prompted in mid journey where I did a few variations. And then I ended up with this one to make always sure that it stands out from the background because when you have a white background, this can sometimes be also a bit tricky, especially for the textures and stuff, and don't have too much lighting contrast on your original images that you would like to generate in 3D. Try to keep them flat, so something like low contrast is also always working quite good. So yeah, just as a quick tip, that you want to keep it as flat as possible for the texture generation later on. So you have here the 1024 pixel resolution and the 1536 pixels. Here it's the pro version, which you can just use with a subscription. And we also have here, of course, the big texture button. And then all the thing we need to do is then, of course, uh, hit here generate. And then your task will go into queue. This will take about, I think, three minutes. We can go here to history. And here you will find all your assets that you just generated. And as you can see, I generated generated here multiple ones already as a test and also this model and for example here you will always find the info from what you use like your reference images you will find here the geometry information like how many vertices it has how many faces we also have then multiple options how we can export our model we have your GLB OBJ STL and FBX STL for example can be really handy if you want to 3d print your model otherwise I always prefer to go with FBX OBJ or GLB by the way make sure to join our free pixel artistry discord server you will find a direct link in the video description where you can join for free where you can connect with other people in our community to learn about the latest 3d ar tools ask questions and help uh, each other out by installation issues for example but also if you want to test out new workflows and stuff this is the main place to go if you want to be up to date and don't have to be reliant on researching everything yourself and to connect with other people in the 3d ar World. So having said that, let's directly continue with the video. So I just opened Blender and here I created a short comparison file for us to have a look. So as you can see, uh, always when you import models into Blender, click on File, Import, and then the GLB FBX. Make sure that you export it as a GLB or FBX if you want to have textures attached to it. So anyways, as you can see, I did here a quick comparison. This was our original images that we put in. This is the 1024 version. I can also quickly switch to the solid one, as you can see from detail wise we have a bit more detail on the uh, armor itself as you can see uh, also on his trousers also the head proportions they are quite different i have to say and this is also what i noticed in my test so far that when it comes to faces spark 3d is uh, actually not that good there's still some room for improvement i think so anyways you can also switch of course to the texturing mode so when we go here to material preview as you can see these are the textures that were generated by the spark 3d texture generator they both did a kind of case job um, i mean you can already see like with the union 3d 2.1 which i prompted here it, i think it's a bit closer overall color wise at least for the pants i think and i prefer this one more let's say it like this because this one is a bit more like shinier and everything so there's definitely a difference when it comes to that but it definitely also has its strength when it comes to those uh to the arms for example and some details around his belt for example we can also have a look how the shader is built up so when we open this window here as you can see we have already the base color here exported and the metallic roughness so if you have watched my 
my Hunyuan 3D 2.1 video already, you can see it has quite the same structure. And as you can see, when I plug in now the base color here, and we only look at the base color, we see that it has this albedo colored look kind of that it tries to remove uh, as much of the shadows as possible because we still have some rest shadows here. So just to keep that in mind. And we also have here the metallic roughness map. And as you can see, this is also uh, with masks. So when we plug in the green channel, for example, we get in the mask for the roughness part. And then this should be, when I see it correctly, the metal map, the blue one. So as you can see, it tries then to extract where the metal parts are or not. When we then go to the Hunion 3D 2.1, so the approach was here, go with uh, the base model, but the adjusted one, which I will show you here in a second, how you can achieve this one. Then I plugged it in into the Hunion 3D 2.1 texturing workflow I showed you in my last video. And I think the result is quite cool. I think this is not upscaled or anything. So there's of course still room for improvement uh, that you upscale the texture in ConfUI, for example. Also here, I think when you compare this and this, there's a there's a big difference actually where Hunyuan 3D recognizes where the metallic parts are and where the rough parts are. I think when it comes to this, there is a big uh, strong difference in Hunyuan 3D 2.1. If you're interested how you can texture uh, your models and also your Spark 3D models with Hunyuan 3D 2.1, please uh, go and check out my previous video. One more quick thing I wanted to show you is hard surface objects because I also wanted to look at not just organic models but also on a hard surface object. I think here uh, Spark 3D is doing quite a decent job, I have to say, when we look also at the model structure itself. It's really good at recognizing those shapes kind of. And what is still a big thing is that we need part segmentation at some point so we can really then decide what models to refine and also can select them individually for rigging and stuff like this. And then now we come to the most exciting part, I think, where we can use an original image and then we pipe it into Flux Context. And then we get much better results than before because it's generating then an image like it would be a ZBrush Skype. So it's a kind of giving us more details back. And then we can use this image that we piped through Flux Context and then use it in Spark 3D. And as you can see, the difference is quite astonishing. So this was the original image, which I used over here, like this one with the textures and everything. And this is, was then the Flux Context image. This is then the result from the Flux Context image. And as you can see, there is such a huge difference, like for example, in his fingers, where we grab more details than we have on the uh, original one. We also see on his boots, for example, we have more detail on his trousers as well. And also on the uh, chest plate, we see it quite obviously way more details than in the original image. So I will show you now a quick and proven way how you can do that and how you can achieve that locally on your own PC. All right, so what we need to do now is first that we start ConfUI. Also make sure to have the latest update installed. And I will link you this workflow as always down below in the video description where you can then directly download it. So what you need to do is then I drag and drop this one on into the field. And as you can see, we have here then our workflow. Here on the left, you can actually see this is the Flux Context workflow, the new one. And as you can see here on the right side, I then simply have an upscaler where we can then upscale our image. I will also link you the models down below and maybe make also some additional text fields here. I'm using here for the low diffusion model, I'm using here the Flux Dev Context FP8 Scaled Safe Tensor. And then I'm using here for the dual clip loader, the Clip A Safe Tensor and the T5XXL FP8 and so on safe tensor. This is the low VRAM model kind of, which works um, for like eight to 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Always check here that you have the right safe tensor, the right text encoder file, and also choose your type flux, but it should be set by default when you download the workflow. Also make sure that you have here the right VAE model, which I will also link you down below. And then only thing we really need to do to make this workflow run is that we're choosing here the uh, file we would like to run through flux content text, then we will select our image. In my case, it's this one here, which I just showed you. And then here is the most important part. As you can see, I'm just prompting, and this is a very simple prompt, but very effective. Take this image and make it a clean 3D sculpted in ZBrush. What we then still need to do is that we're choosing here for the upscale model. We should here choose then uh, the upscale model, which I have here, the four times clear reality version one. I will also put your link where you can download this one and then make sure to put it in your 
upscale folder. And this is all what we need basically to run this workflow. You could also choose here a second image that you blend with the first one, but I didn't experiment with this one, but you can try it just to show you really quickly what Flux Context is doing. So basically it's taking one image and then you can say there are now two of these birds, for example, here. And as you can see, Flux Context is really good to maintain like the original image and then just um, create a new image out of it, which is really important for consistency in your images. Having said that, let's finally run the workflow. And once everything finished, as you can see, we then have here the result from our base image that we had here on the left. We have then here this clay version of it that we got from this prompt here. And Flux Context is uh, doing a really amazing job at keeping all the details and even adding additional details. As you can see on this arm, for example, we have no additional stuff that we didn't see that defined on the texture itself. But overall, Spark 3D is then able to pick up more details than before because we then have um, all those rills and as you can see here all those uh, gaps and edges once you did that what you can do is then uploading here the file and then you will get here an upscaled version and i think this is looking pretty cool and you will find then your final generation from flex context in your output folder you can go to the conf ui output and you can simply check here that you then have here your final output images. As you can see, I change the seed sometimes to see what the best result is. For example, this could work really well here. Here, this was also one of the best um, results I got so far. So make sure to play around with the seed and uh, with different prompts. I really hope you liked this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you want like to see more on this channel. Also, as always, feel free to check out my 3D AI newsletter and the Discord as mentioned already. So you get the latest news in the 3 di space and, and that you can connect with other people in our community. So actually having said that, see you on the next one.